The Tao of Self-Confidence, episode 442. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a classically trained chef, a holistic nutritionist, and she is also a health and wellness coach. So I'm really excited to have her on today and share her story with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Serena Poon. Serena, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our, our listeners. Oh, hi. I'm great. I'm great. I'm really excited to be here. So thank you so much for inviting me and asking me to be on your podcast. So I am, as you've already said, a classically trained chef and I am a holistic nutritionist. And my background, ironically, and it's not something that I uh, that I talk about all the time, but I think it's important to know uh, I actually started off studying for law, you know, before I went to college, I was pre-law, political science, you know, I'm Chinese, obviously, so I'm supposed to be the first lawyer in our family. And, you know, first generation born here, both my parents uh, grew up in Hong Kong. And my senior year in uh, college, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, with liver cancer, um, and it was stage four. So... That journey is sort of what shifted my focus into what I do now and what I offer to my clients, which is just obviously health and wellness, healing from the inside out, preventative lifestyles to really live and enjoy your life to your fullest. And I do a lot of work with, you know, some with doctors, people who have certain little ailments, whether they're big or small, it could be a skin thing or even someone who is battling cancer. And I work with them to use food, food as medicine, you know, to either help sort of relieve some of their symptoms or ailments. Sometimes you can even heal the body depending on what the condition is, or at the very minimal to just to provide comfort. You know, food is love and food is comfort. So that's basically what I do. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Oh, my favorite one that I actually share quite often, even if it's not in a, in a, in a place where we're talking about self-confidence, is no one is you and that is your power. I mean, it's even something that I remind myself of when I have moments where I'm thinking, how can I do this? Or why do they want me to do this? Or am I good enough to do this? That's a quote that I remind myself of. It's a David Grohl quote. He's a part of the Foo Fighters. Not sure if you're a fan of the band, but uh, that's, that's who he's with. Awesome. And, and, you know, I like some of the Foo Fighter songs. I think he's a great music artist. And I think that's a great quote, especially with self-confidence, because, you know, to be yourself, just to be your true self is, you know, something that most people don't really do, right? A lot of the, a lot of people still kind of like hide behind a mask and. Sure. And they also, they try, you know, I think a lot of us that we're, we're trying to sort of fit a mold that either society creates or just a mold that we think is what will make others accept us. And it's just an important reminder that that is what makes each of us powerful and unique and why we can do everything and anything that we want to do is because there's no one, there's no one else out there like you, you know, your uniqueness, that's your power. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So I think this is a great quote that you shared. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? For me, it really truly is believing in yourself enough to trust yourself, your decisions, your intuition, your own energy, regardless of what situation you're in or what someone else's opinion is. You know, sometimes you can be, you can even, you can be in a, let's say, let's say you can just, you can be in a room, you know, when there's, you can be at a party and sometimes there's maybe like a, a, an odd energy or something just kind of throws you off. Something as simple as that. You know what I'm talking about? And even in a situation as basic as that, in the past, you know, or I've questioned myself or sometimes people think there's, okay, what's, people are looking at me. Is there, what's wrong with me? And there obviously isn't anything wrong with you. It's being able to sort of separate your energies from other energies. It's being able to trust your intuition. It's being able to make a decision 
regardless of what the decision is about and know for certain that you're doing the right thing and not have other people's opinions cloud. Because I think that everything we know is inside us. The knowledge is inside us. We know what we want. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And yeah, you know, when it comes to intuition, you know, a lot of us feel like, you know, maybe maybe, you know, what we think or what we feel might not be the right path when really, you know, your intuition is giving you a sign to go out there and do it, even though if it doesn't look like what you think it should look like, you know, just go for it. You never know where it, where it can lead you. Yeah. And it could be, it could be in about anything. It could be about your career. It could be about your relationship. It could be about a car you're buying. I mean, it could be about anything, you know, so often we second guess ourselves when really we, we always know what we want and we know what's right for us. You know, we all have that in our compass and having having the confidence and self-confidence to know that that is always going to guide you in the right way. That's the most important thing. That is true self-confidence. Awesome. And thanks for sharing that great definition. And Serena, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Oh, I, I mean, I was I was def- I was very insecure. I was insecure pr- about everything we just talked about. You know, I, I'd be insecure about my appearance Regardless of what anyone else said, if they're complimentary or not, I was insecure about my decisions, about sometimes the littlest things. And I know it sounds crazy. And half the time I'd feel like I was crazy in my head because I couldn't decide if I wanted, you know, to wear black or white that day. And, and it's tough because you, you lose that, that you lose that compass inside you. You know, there's no, there's no barometer for anything when you are constantly questioning yourself, you know, and you're almost like a shell of yourself. You know what I mean? And you kind of know it, you know, you, you know that you're not being all of you. And what it does is it creates a lot of fear and anxiety. And then you end up making decisions based on that fear, fear of not being good enough, fear of failure, and just even the anxiety leading up to it. And so, you know, if I, have to be very honest, that's something that it's been, you know, I'm a different place now, but that was definitely a very long journey through life. And it's just about, it's about learning about yourself and trusting yourself. But uh, it's nice to know that's not where I am now. Even though every once in a while, I absolutely question <laughs> something that I may say, think or do, but it's normal. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of, um, it doesn't really have a, a hold over me the way it used to. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we can all relate to, right? And, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you didn't always have to second guess yourself that you were more than enough to go out there and, you know, do the things that you want, be the person that you are? What was that aha moment? For me, that aha moment came, I had had a series of surgeries. And so I had the, I had this medical issue, I had a series of surgeries for it. And the last surgery, there was, I hemorrhaged. Um, post-op. And so it was, it was very scary. I really almost died. I was so grateful and, and I recovered, but being a chef, you know, your, your physical health is just as important as your mental health and focus. And I wasn't able to use one of my arms and almost one, once, not one side of my body, but one side of my upper body for several months. And I was in a place where, you know, I thought I was panicking obviously a little bit about okay my career my livelihood this is what I do you know I'm working physically with my with my hands on a regular basis and also how that decreased my value maybe as a person definitely as a chef and less than six months after this whole episode I signed a massive contract with a huge client. And it was, and it was basically because I sort of shifted my focus. I was thinking, okay, well, if I can't do this the way I've been doing it, if I can't, if I can't be as physical as I was before, how else, what else can I do? And that's when I started focusing more the consulting side and bring all the knowledge that I had that I put into what I do with food. And I started doing it with consulting and curating. And that led me to sign this contract that I did all by myself. And, you know, for me, if you know me, negotiating is tough for me. You know, it's just not really part of my personality. I I create food for comfort and love. And that's what I'm all about. Not really hardcore negotiating. And I did it without without going out and getting advice from, say, like a mentor or someone else that I thought knew more than I did. And it was successful. And that that was just sort of this moment where it was like, 
I can do anything. I did this all by myself. I literally can do anything. I'm walking around. I can't even really use my left arm. And I've shifted my career. And it. And I did this by myself. And it's a success. Therefore, I can do anything. And it just has continued to sort of launch from that place. And that was sort of my aha moment. And it, and it didn't, it came from a place where I really wasn't in the best place, you know, which only sort of it strengthened that moment that much more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's a great story. You know, sometimes when people are at their lowest points, I always say there's no other way than to go up. And, you know, you use what happened to you and realize, you know, what else can I do, right? What I can find another way to use my talents and my skills to create a, a career out of it, which you did. And it was actually a lot better than you realized. And, um, you know, because of that moment, what's your life been like now? Oh, I mean, I, I am absolutely grateful for every single day and every opportunity that comes my way. I'm grateful to be here considering, you know, what happened post-op. It was so scary and I'm lucky to even be here. And and I think that kind of shift in my mindset and that kind of gratitude continues to bring more into my life. And my business has grown so much, you know, more in a way that I, I guess I want to say I've always kind of like dreamed and I'm still, I'm not quite there because I don't really see an end point. It just grows. I've met amazing people. I've grown a lot spiritually, which actually has, growing spiritually has actually grown my self-confidence because as I've mentioned before, you know, it's a lot, it comes from a place of self-love, you know, whether or not you trust and believe in yourself and what's inside. And getting rid of all that fear and all that anxiety, you know, knowing, knowing that, like, as you said, at a moment when, when you might feel, okay, everything is lost. Why is this happening? I'm in a terrible place to go from that moment and have an amazing opportunity and just take that and just grow it. It's been very empowering. And, and I've been able to sort of share that, you know, I might not necessarily share this particular story with a lot of people, but I've shared my journey and I've shared that which I've learned. And it's been really rewarding to see it affect others and sort of give them maybe that little piece of hope or just something like an example of something that they can do that's helped them as well. So I guess I can say it's just been it's been a beautiful journey. And it's not without its ups and downs, but I really, truly appreciate every lesson along the way because I know it's teaching me something. And it has. Every challenge has come up, even if in the moment I'm not understanding why, trusting that I will understand it at another point, that knowledge from that lesson does come back and serve me later. And that I can say 100%. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, that's great that you're able to, you know, have all these amazing opportunities and, you know, just the the mindset shift, right? That's the biggest, like, biggest discovery, like learning that, you know, life will throw things at you, right? You know, obstacles happen, but it's, you know, how you bring yourself back up. That's what's the most important part of it. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in a similar journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I think if you, you know, and sometimes you can feel very alone and it's taking a moment and thinking about who or what supports you around you. And I think having those energies around you really, really help, especially if you're in a place where you're struggling. It just, it just helps to know that someone sees who you are and supports and, you know, accepts everything about you. And there are times, you know, as I've, as I've said that, you know, you might feel like you're alone and there isn't anyone there. And it's just knowing that there are other people that have started the journey on their own and it can start with you all by yourself. You know, talking to your, telling yourself, affirming to yourself who you are, that there is no one, there's no one there but you, and that is your power. That is so important because self-confidence really comes from a place of self-love and self-love comes from a place of your thoughts. So when you're not feeling confident, it's because you're telling yourself, you can't do this, you're not good enough, you're not this. I mean, I'm not saying for everybody, but that's in general, right? When someone isn't feeling confident, it's because you feel like you're lacking. Telling yourself that you're enough, telling yourself that you're everything that you need, even if it doesn't feel authentic, even if it, even if it feels like you're not even being honest with yourself, keep saying it. Keep saying it. Because those thoughts 
Those thoughts are incredibly powerful. Those thoughts shape your life. Those thoughts tell you whether or not something can be real or not. So why tell yourself something can't? Tell yourself that something can be. Tell yourself that you can do anything. Thanks for sharing those awesome tips. And, you know, I truly believe that, you know, just what you say to yourself is so important. And yeah, you know, at first it's going to sound weird because you're not used to it. But the more you do it, the more you will start to believe in yourself and believe that what you're saying to yourself is true. So I really love that you mentioned that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I talk a lot about self-love on um, my social media. I'm uh, My Instagram is Chef Serena Poon. It's the same for Twitter. Um, my website is serenaloves.com. It's currently under reconstruction, but it'll be up soon. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Serena, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Serena's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Serena for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Serena. You're so welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.